Max Verstappen is known as an aggressive, sometimes hot-headed racer who looks like he's always on the limit. But interestingly, his driving style paints a completely different picture. So what is it about Verstappen's driving style that makes him one of the fastest drivers on the F1 grid? How is he extracting the most from his Red Bull F1 car? And how does his style compare to other F1 drivers? All of that coming up. First, let's have a look at Verstappen's racing line. You may have heard that drivers like Verstappen, Hamilton and Vettel drive a squarer racing line. But what is a square racing line? What are the benefits and how does Verstappen use it to his advantage? The reason a racing line goes from the outside to the inside and back to the outside of a track is to open up the corner as much as possible. The shallower the arc through the corner, the more speed you can take through it. This is called the geometric racing line. It's essentially how the line would look if you used a compass to draw it. However, this doesn't take into account the fact that the car typically needs to decelerate into and accelerate out of each bend. With this change of speed, the dynamics of the car are shifting, with load being transferred around and the balance of grip changing. Therefore, the fastest way through a corner is not the geometric line, rather it's something we call the ideal racing line. A driver on the ideal racing line will turn into the corner later than the geometric line, reducing their apex speed, but allowing the car's platform to sit flatter on the exit, using more of the tyre's grip for acceleration rather than cornering. A squarer line like Verstappen's will be even further away from the geometric racing line, with the car doing more turning in a shorter distance on the track, allowing a faster entry and exit, but an even slower apex. This driving style is something similar to that of Schumacher and Hamilton, where they set the car up to have a very positive front end, so it can turn better in the mid corner. This style has positives and negatives. The car's platform can remain flat for longer, which is easier to manage and usually results in fewer mistakes. But it means when he arrives at the corner, it's tighter and there is more turning to do. This technique was most obvious in the rain-soaked 2016 Brazilian Grand Prix through the final fast left-hander before the start-finish line. Here Verstappen was turning in late, getting the car's platform flatter earlier and straightening the exit of the corner, meaning the corner was shorter and the chance of unwanted oversteer as he crossed the slippery wet rubber was reduced. When done well, this style is tidier and creates fewer mistakes than those on the geometric racing line. A driver like Carlos Sainz uses a more geometric line, meaning he is essentially turning for longer and so multiplying the opportunity for an unforced error. Here, it's really easy to misjudge the entry speed and so have it cost you a lot of lap time if you're slightly over or under the limit. Sainz is a driver who relies heavily on his feel during that longer corner, while Verstappen is looking to get the platform of his car flat as much as possible, driving in straighter lines. This still requires excellent feel, but for not quite as long through the corner. Spending less time turning also reduces tyre wear and benefits the driver in changeable conditions, as we've seen many times with Verstappen. When we're talking about the limit of a racing car, I refer to the point at which all four tyres are giving their maximum amount of grip. You can of course push beyond this point where the car is sliding across the surface of the circuit, but most of the time, especially in modern F1, this is a slower way to drive. If you're still watching now, let me take three seconds to ask you to consider subscribing to the Driver61 channel. Next, we're going to use some of Verstappen's early footage, onboard footage from before his F1 career, to review how he handles a car on the limit and how good his feel is. It's in these formative years when a driver is laying the foundation of their driving style, understanding how they can extract the most grip and therefore speed from any car beneath them. It's easier in cars without F1's sophisticated suspension to view how a driver manipulates a car to get it to do what he wants. In these onboard videos of Verstappen in 2014, you can see how he manages the car on the limit. When you're watching for how a car is behaving, you always need to watch the steering wheel. That way you can see how the car is balanced and whether it's understeering or oversteering. Cars like these are generally fastest with a little rotation. Rotation is a controlled amount of oversteer that turns the car into and through the corner. It's not to be confused with uncontrolled oversteer, which is when the rear of the car slides too much and needs to be reacted to, ending up in costing lap time. 
You can see that Verstappen is driving the car with a perfect amount of rotation as he enters each corner. His initial steering input combined with trail braking smoothly allows the car to turn in. But after you can see the steering wheel comes back to straight even though the car is still turning. This is rotation with the car essentially turning itself into the corner. Notice that the steering wheel never goes into the counter steering or opposite lock position. Verstappen, even back then, has a very refined style. He manages to manipulate the car in such a subtle way, which he is doing in F1 through to this day. His square racing lines, minimizing mistakes, combined with his feel for the track's surface, means he can predict grip levels very well. And it's this ability to predict, rather than react to what the car is doing, that makes Verstappen so fast over a race. Many people think that being fast in a race car is about being brave, but being brave means you're not certain of what's about to happen. When you can predict what the car is about to do, when you're certain about how it will react, you don't need to be brave. It's far better to predict when a car will break away rather than have it slide and need to react to it. When you're reacting, you're always behind the car. Predictability means clear decisions. This, in my opinion as a coach, is the most intelligent way to drive. It's a style we see in the multiple champions because it means extra mental capacity that can be used to think about racecraft, strategy and setup, rather than simply keeping the car on the road. This is one of the reasons Verstappen is so fast in changeable and wet conditions. He has the extra capacity to experiment on the circuit. We've seen this a number of times and I spoke about it in my video about why he's so fast in the wet, which I'll link to below. Being quick in the wet on a circuit where the complex mixture of rain, puddles, tyre rubber and marbles change the grip drastically every metre is all about collecting information and developing from there. In Brazil 2016, it was challenging just to keep an F1 car on the circuit, let alone exploring the track. However, Verstappen's safer, more conservative style meant he was less likely to make a mistake and so could go and explore the circuit, constantly trying different lines and gathering information. Of course, Verstappen still needs to hold on to this information and decide how he'll approach each corner, but that's why I put him on the same level as drivers like Hamilton and Leclerc, drivers who think deeply about their technique and have the ability to adjust their style as we've seen with all great drivers in this series. If you enjoyed this video, check out other F1 driver's styles I've broken down, including Senna, Schumacher and Alonso. If you're a sim or real world racer, check out our tutorials to make you faster on track. We're also launching the next intake for our incredible iRacing training program, which I'll link to below.